So a very popular question I always see is, I'm new to hops, where do I begin? Well, assuming that you understand some of the fundamentals, as in you understand smoothing and auto smoothing and normals and things like that, you know, after having hard ops installed, the first thing I would do personally, but this is just me, is I would turn on the logo, the old classic logo, make it big as possible, make it obnoxiously large. I like my logo big to represent my love of hops. There we go. I knew something was missing from my 3D view, but all jokes aside. So we'll delete this cube and we'll insert a plane. And the best way to get started with hops, in my opinion, is the solenoid. And so I was actually linking someone to the older version of the solenoid. And I was thinking, well, maybe I could do a newer version of the solenoid just to show where hops has come since the last solenoid. Uh, I feel that modeling the same things over and over is probably the best way to show you guys. So first I'll press Alt X and we will change this from modifier to bisect. Notice that I had to go all the way up to the top. I, I didn't have to do that. I could have pressed D inside of mirror and just chose bisect here. And also I can choose my orientation as well as my pivot point. And what I want to do is just bisect a little stretch of what mirror does, but I really love bisect. So with this shape, and we're looking at it head on, if I press numpad one, I'm looking at it frontal. Um, I'll actually rotate it a couple of times and get it on the other axis. So now we're looking at it from side view. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to show how different things can be just based on a small decision change. So we go under screw and we get the result that we want. And it looks like now screws actually being a little bit more reasonable in life. So we'll tap in edit mode and we'll select this vert and just press Q. And in edit mode, I will use the hard ops Q menu mark option with control click to add a bevel. And so now we're adding a bevel to this. And so if we close the T panel, we can see things a little bit better. And if I press control alt space bar, we can see things way better. We'll tap out of edit mode and I'll use the alt V viewport menu which is in hard ops in order to see wireframes very quickly. And with all these points converging in the center, I can tell that this is going to be problematic when I'm cutting later. So we will go under the Q menu and down to operations and choose decimate. Decimate by default will use planar, which will dissolve front facing merge verts. In fact, if we press control tilde to bring up our hard ops helper, we can actually go into the hops helper and toggle the final decimate off and on in order to see what that result is. And because of that, we can actually get a little bit further with this than we would having all this additional geo working against us. Also to set us up for the future, I'm gonna bring a cube out in front and penetrate it ever so slightly. And we'll select the solenoid and choose difference. And so it looks like we basically did nothing except now on this cube, we can actually use geometry to basically force geometry on the thing that we are working with. So it's just an additional level of control. I like to use kind of a byproduct of Boolean operations that I just keep on my mind to take advantage of. So with the shape selected, we will click bevel, which will allow us to adjust bevel, which isn't what we want. So I'll right click to cancel. What we want to do here is actually add a new bevel. So I will control click bevel in order to add a new bevel that will grab it by the 30 degree angle. And so with this now set up, we have our front line here. In fact, if we want to set ourselves up even more, we can press Alt X. And because we're in full screen, we don't have mirror options at the top. We would have mirror options if we had the end panel open. As you can see, when I press Alt X, you should be able to see some mirror options show up somewhere around here. But in any case, whenever you're in a full screen situation and you're not able to see your mirror options, you want to press D in order to ensure that you have the right option selected. And we just want to mirror this on the Z, which looks like it does nothing, except if I were to shift A, uh, well, first shift right click, place my 3D cursor, and then shift A, add a box, and we just set our box up, select this shape, and press Q and choose difference. We're now cutting into this with this shape. So 
you know, basically in hard ops, you can select two shapes and the Q menu will automatically be aligned to show you difference, which is by far the most popular option in hard ops. At this point, I actually want to bevel this edge, but I want to keep it non-destructive. I was about to bevel both of them, which would have been great. However, in order to bevel both of them non-destructively, I would need to put an edge between to kind of buffer them. However, in all honesty, because this is a mirrored asset, we can actually control click and bevel just one edge and that will bevel that will take place on the other side thanks to mirror. So sometimes it's important to be mindful of your modifiers that you have in place in order to kind of maintain a uh, level of understanding with where you're at with your model. In fact, here's my modifier stack looking a little unruly. We'll choose the collapse modifiers to collapse them into a micro order where we can really see what's going on. In fact, if we wanted to do a anime style recap, we can press Q and shift click mod scroll to scroll through the modifiers up to this point. And so everything's going good so far, except you see at the end, the shading breaks down. And for this reason, sharpen is here. You're usually the entry level videos I begin talking about sharpen. However, this one is kind of a uh, non-destructive demonstration and using multiple modifiers and balancing different levels of bevels. But under weighted, under the uh, sharpen shading assistant, under alt is weighted normal. We can alt click sharpen, which will allow us to improve the smoothing, smoothing shading just slightly, allowing us to get just a little bit further. My goal when working is to not have the model look inadequate at any point during design. In fact, I want to be looking at a finalish looking result all the way through. As I'm working, I'm able to I'm able to add additional bevel levels and adjust the previous ones just by going into bevel and I can just hold control in order to go to previous ones in the stack. We also have a bevel control system that's rarely talked about now, but I still use it all the time, and that is control shift B. The bevel helper is your one-stop shop for just controlling all your bevels in the same place. So I'm a big fan of using this thing, especially with the half and multiply on both sides in order to allow me to quickly uh, jump up and down values and return to those values that I jumped from by clicking their adjacent buttons. So I will press Q and we'll control shift click bevel in order to add a new bevel. And you see right here, it actually does nothing, which is what's intended. So what we'll do is press X to drop this bevel at half the size of this bevel that you act actually see. And I know this is a lot to take in, but half bevel is something I've dreamed about for so long. And now it's something that's just part of BWIF. So there might've been an earlier point in hard ops that you might've seen where we added a feature called half bevel, but that piece was not adequate to be the final result. So it is more important that it's now a behavior as part of bevel. For example, Another one is that 2D bevel used to be a thing where we had a very special bevel just for 2D shapes that is all now consolidated under bevel. So while it seems like there's a lot of changes happening, most of them are kind of in the direction of logical sanity. So here we are in a situation where we cannot get this particular angle due to the bevel being at 60. So what we'll do is go under angle and we'll just hold alt and just roll the wheel backwards until we catch just a little bit more of this angle. It's like petting a kitty, except the kitty is um, better shading. So we actually grabbed a little bit more than we wanted to over there. So I'll roll it back. And so this is actually the limit of where we're gonna be able to get with our angle, unless we begin making some choices. So this is about the angle limit before we begin reaching for the wrong areas. So. I will more than likely need to make an angle compromise. Like I said, this is game of angles. So the rules are you either set up your angles correctly in order to stack them on top of each other, or you risk beveling your bevels, which is probably the worst issue that people face. It's something that I lie awake at night pondering is how I can prevent people from overshooting their bevels and beveling their bevels. Of course, the default answer is clamp overlap, but believe me, that isn't completely adequate. So I apologize for kind of going off off script there, but all I did was just do a couple of box cuts with red box. Since box cutter is my active tool, just pressing um, you know Alt W and then left mouse clicking on a surface should orient the box to the surface, which is just my favorite way to draw a box. 
you know, I never thought shift A would be replaced, but here we are. Because of the unique angle I chose to make this example on, usually I'm very strict about working on the X axis and working frontally for, you know, most assets just due to it being the most um, predictable situation to work in. And here we see the angle just not catching exactly as much as we want. So we will just roll that back and we have to roll it back really far. So there's actually a couple of better ways to deal with this. I would recommend actually going under bull scroll and locating the bull in. And an interesting thing new to this version of hard ops that you couldn't do before is you can hold shift and literally roll the wheel to roll your bull in up the stack. And we can roll it as high as needed and as low as needed, we can shift it between levels. And so right here, the scenario didn't actually work out for us, but we can get a little more generous with our previous bevel. So holding shift or actually control to jump to the second bevel, I can now hold alt and just lower that angle ever so slightly. In fact, we actually jumped one level too far, this one. We hold Alt and we scroll it back and now it's caught exactly as we want it. So the game of Solenoids is a dangerous game, but it's also a game that I do recommend mastering if you're a new user because there's so many ways you can fail if you fail to understand exactly what's going on. So it's a game of awareness. Uh, I play it quite often myself just to see if there's uh, any ways that we can actually make it more efficient. So the version that you're using now and you're seeing me use is probably our best attempt so far at making this workflow more streamlined. You see this little piece sticking out. That's actually because on the original mesh, I didn't delete the interior edge. And if we go into face orientation, I was expecting to see a little red. We see a little red in there, you know, we won't talk about that. You know, the game of angles is a dangerous game. Like I said in yesterday's video, it's Arnold's game. You know, the stakes are real. It's not like Ford's game, if you're watching Westworld. Just kidding. That's, I got problems with going off on tangents, you guys. I keep having to censor videos <laughs> for tangents. So, continuing on, just using a little box cutter and just doing cuts ever so slight to just create surface differentials. Eventually these things will add up. And if we press Alt V, we can turn off wireframe to really see what we have going on with our solenoid. And I'm liking where it's going so far. I would like it even more if we lobotomized it on the top. So my favorite thing to do is draw a box and press spacebar to apply it. And if we look at our shape here, we can see that the shading is beginning to break down. It's beginning to show its limits because we've uh, pushed it past its Yoki limits. You know, it's not, not a full Yoma. So let's go ahead and add a weld modifier. Right now the weld is a little too, little too far, which is why we're eating our last bevel. But using shift and just rolling the wheel, we can roll it where it's needed which is right before the last boolean where we can actually clean this shape up a little. And by moving the mouse, we can see exactly how far we're moving things on the merge. We only want to merge it enough to clean it up, but not so much that we begin disintegrating our surface. So with weld, the, the game of angles becomes a little bit more interesting. I'll tap into edit mode and we'll select this edge, delete it and take a look at our shape here and we can see things breaking down on the inside. And if we roll through our modifier stack by shift clicking on mod scroll in the Q menu, we can see what's going on. So right here, everything's working out. And then there's a point in which it doesn't. And it's when we weld, you know, what happened weld? Let's turn it off and we see everything looking good again. You know, what's going on is weld needs to go up the stack. And then when we scroll through, we get a better result. So even in the future, I want to be able to have the list reorder whenever you move a modifier, but just the ability to visually see what you're moving around and reordering the stack on the fly, just worth the cost of admission. 
uh, I do hope you go back and check out the previous solenoid video and, and try it using the latest version because everything that was complained about previously, we aim to rectify in these latest versions. So I'll go under bevel and we will control scroll to find the right bevel, which is probably this one, where we can just roll it back and it's not the right bevel. So we'll exit, we'll exit and re-access bevel where we will roll the angle back again. And we could catch it on that one, but I'm not really digging what I'm seeing there. So this is a good opportunity to use control shift B and just look at what we have here. So we have one segment to start. We'll give it six on this one and we'll give it six on the next one. And this should actually cause the next bevel to stop grabbing these uh, very weak three segment bevels. And so by rolling it back with alt, we now have the result we want, but we also are catching a little bit more than we want. So this right here is more than likely because I am beveling with a profile of 0.5. We have quite a few users who request that they are able to set their bevel profile to something more reasonable. And we are personally big fans of 0.7 because it helps avoid such issues. And in fact, if we go into our control shift tilde or control shift B bevel helper, and we expand the parameters, we can actually just jump this up to 0.7, which gets us something a little more unreasonable. So we want to bring it down, maybe down to 0.3. Let's see what profile will save us. 0.42 is actually our savior here. But now we are actually accessing um, a very specific range of bevel values to be able to tweak between without breaking our object into a million pieces. So while I was able to build this fairly non-destructive, it isn't truly non-destructive as you know the term would imply. Um, I can go in and tweak it and re-modify it after the fact, but doing such things live would be, do more harm than good. So here we are looking at weld. And we could do a lot of things with this piece. This piece is so simple now, yet it's bound to the rules of all of these modifiers. It's bound to everything that helped make this unto this. So let's reanalyze this. If it were me, I would personally smart apply. I would just smart apply and let's look at what we have. This is what we have so far. And we still have shading issues here. But the good thing about Smart Apply is it's not going to apply things not supposed to. I'm just going to merge that because this vert's just too close. It's just too close to get. This vert is also too close. However, my patience with these verts being too close and not making it is running out. So if I see another one, I'm going to get weldy on them. You can also see that by applying a very complex bevel to a very simple shape, we were causing some surface shading issues in this particular area. Whenever this happens, I'm a big fan of quarantining it using knife. However, there are other ways to actually solve this in a more permanent fashion. In fact, I can tell by the way this cut occurred that an interior face occurred. So these are things that just happen due to random bugs between us and Blender. However, um, you know the best we can do is help you be more aware of them occurring so that you can get in and actually remove them like you see me doing there. Interior faces can cause quite a few heartbreaks in the shading department, but now we have something a little bit more reasonable with our shading. So to um, take this a step further, because you know we didn't get we didn't learn enough just surviving, we got to take it too far. And you can see that Smart Apply actually removed my mirror. So we will just reapply the mirror, which will definitely place the mirror now before the weighted normal. So there was previously an update fix that addressed that, but there is a degree of testing that goes on in between releases. However, sometimes things do slip through the cracks. It really depends on the uh, workflow preferences of the testers. Sometimes they, they just want to have fun with the new stuff, the good stuff, and I can't blame them. I'm also very excited about what's new. The thought of holding back what's coming next to hard ops is something that I prefer not to uh, even contemplate. I want everyone to be on the same page so that way I can just do tutorials just showing, you know, how this tool is supposed to be used in action. But I don't want to say, you know, coming to a hops near you, you know, even, even though it'll roll well, 
but I want people to be able to be using always the most up-to-date confirmed great version. So a few more box cuts, just playing with angles, just really letting sorting take the will here. And we'll draw a box around this area. And let's play dangerous. Let's play real danger. In fact, let's not. Let's uh, play it safe. So by playing it safe, I will go under operations and we will shift click smart apply. Shift clicking will duplicate this object and remove the last bevel and the last weight at normal, which sounds strange, except when you do it, it results in you getting a mesh that is untainted by modifiers and is perfectly ready for you to do a surface extraction from. Delete everything that isn't the mesh by using control I. And then we can actually take this piece of geometry, inset it in order to ensure that we don't hotline because it is after all a clone of its original geometry. So an inset will always be required. And now we have this piece that we can just go under modifier, solidify, and just solidify and difference and that's it that's all we were going for and we could we could get creative with it as well you know um i'm a big fan of using box cutter on cutters themselves in order to get really interesting results you know just get out there you know or just sending my cutter out in the dating scenes like get out there you little scamp and this cut i like it so much that i want to repeat it so i'm going to mod scroll and we'll bring this back and I'm going to press shift C to place my cursor and we're going to use radial array, except we're going to use the 3d cursor to rotate this around. So I will go under mesh tools and we will control click radial array. And we actually have options to lower the amount that it's being rotated. So if we look at the help, you can see that we can press R to change our radial amount to be a, a lower number. And we only need so much. So I'm just pressing R, just cycling through the values here. And this is actually the result that is desirable. And let's take a look at our solenoid. So every solenoid I do, I just deviate just a little bit more, a little bit differently. They're, they're kind of a shape study I do in the study of Boolean control and modifier management. So, you know, while I recommend it to you as a beginner, I definitely also recommend it to anyone just uh, getting acquainted with Blender and hard surface to just, you know, uh, cutting a box is level one, uh, cutting a cylinder is level two, and then level three is cutting a sphere. And then after that, I believe you've um, completed the school of hard ops, basically. Um, in fact, as I say it, I realize that that's probably the courses that you guys need, and then we're done. So I deleted one edge off of this plane and there's a plethora of ways we could have approached this, but I'm going to go ahead and just bevel this and then we'll go back and use under the Q menu curve extract. Curve extract is new. There's a ton of ways we could have handled converting to curves. In fact, you can control click smart apply and it will actually convert to a curve as well. But curve extract is a whole new beast and I'm quite excited for it. It was uh, kind of based on the idea of Smart Apply, but it's just so much more radical. So now that we got the curve correct, here we go. So with this curve, I'm going to use the Q menu to convert it to the mesh. Notice that most of the options, pretty much all the options I need are under Q. So when people are like, how do you learn to use hops? Well, I mean, first you press Q, my guy, and then it um, becomes a lot simpler. At least sharpen a box and then look at it in edit mode. And then you tell me what you think it does. So we're going to shift click smart apply in order to make a duplicate of this piece. And I will just delete everything that isn't this face group by using invert and X to delete and we will go and add a modifier for solidify. Notice that the shading is just atrocious. That is what sharpen is for. However, we can see that sharpen, sharpen it a little bit too fiercely, sharpening it by 30. So let's undo that. And you can actually pre-configure sharpen before it's used. 
which is something I'm a big fan of. I like to sometimes pre-configure my sharpen, but you can also go in and just quickly jump to different auto smooth groups as well, like so, which is actually what we're needing to deal with. So the, the, the job of sharpen is actually very specialized. It's a, it's a marker of sorts. Here we can see our bevel out of control. Let's just alt and pet the kitty. And we now have a much better result. However, our auto smooth is out of control. Don't worry, sharpen to the rescue. We could actually sharpen it and just play with the auto smooth value, which I had users doing before, but I felt that that might've been a one way trip to desktop city. So a better idea had to be come up with. And that is why when you press Q and you look at sharpen, there's now a shift option for auto smooth. We go in there and auto smooth is just going to help you. This is what we were dealing with at the beginning. This is what we're left with. And we're in much better shape than when we started. In fact, I'm going to hit this with a control one subdivision just to make this thing look terrible. And let's go ahead and sharpen it. And we still are sharpening the wrong edges. And this is because I'm just such a stickler for never changing my sharpen values because there's a time when I need it and that's in the mid range uh, poly lifestyle. However, what I do need to do is grab these two boundary edges and mark them because otherwise they don't have any creasing to hold their subdivision integrity. So now that this device, well device, this area is subdivided and also bevel, we can jump it up to level two, getting rid of fastening because life is a battle to remove fastening. I can guarantee you if I S sharp it now, it will definitely work good. But the default settings are kind of angled towards a um, low to mid poly type workflow. So if I control click bevel, we have a new bevel and I'm holding shift in order to adjust the range ever so slightly. And now we have a much better result on our solenoid. All right, so back to the video. There's always a moment I gotta pause and answer some messages, but as long as it's brief, I can keep my sanity and remain my, regain my focus and time to get back into it. And we'll use circle right here in order to draw a circle. I will not be joining this one to the surface. Notice that this circle came out backwards which is kind of odd. Luckily we have the hotkey of shift F to flip. Also have the hotkey of B to adjust the bevel. I was about to press B again to remove it, but let's keep it. And there's our circle. We will select this piece, select anything to mirror across and press alt X and we will mirror this across. Um, whenever you have multiple objects selected, having this deactivated, I believe is an error based on the current one. So, update coming soon for that. I'm, my job is the bug finder. I guess that's why there's so many updates. Um, I hate bugs. I'm determined to offer a experience that users from other software can connect with a premium experience. So we'll just cut some notches. Notches never hurt anybody. Maybe a little bit. Something looks a little strange, but I'm gonna pretend I'm not seeing it because in the grand scheme of this whole asset, it's actually looking pretty good. However, on individual areas, we could definitely do better. And by do better, I mean we would need to actually reproject their normals, possibly using Mesh Machine, which I, I wanna do a solenoid video in the future where I actually cover that as well, talk about the idea of a solenoid using Mesh Machine because Mesh Machine has a plethora of tools to make our lives easier. However, I do try to keep the um, overall budget of a uh, tutorial down to a certain price. However, as time goes on, I believe more and more people have uh, also gotten Mesh, mesh Machine, Decal Machine. Hopefully, I love both those tools that we can um, also begin doing content, more content in that department without uh, complaints. So looking at it from this side, I will just draw an ingon. And this edge sticking out the front bothers me. Is it even an edge? I guarantee you it's an edge. In fact, let's select everything, tap in edit mode, and let's just delete everybody's middle edge. 
So I'm just selecting it over and over, just deleting it. You know, whose edge is that? You can keep your edge. And we come out of edit mode and luckily we have it and we still have our form held together. So this is our resulting solenoid for today's demo. Um, I just wanted to go through and just kind of show how HardOps has um, been making strides based on complaints of previous solenoids. Um, if you do go and look into it, um, I would look at the comments because everyone who exhibited difficulty with some degree of the workflow, I wanted to try to improve things for. So the current tool that you see now is almost a complaint response version of what it formerly was. You know, we try to make it in a way that we feel would work towards professionals. And then we maybe go, go and do a simplification pass for users who might be um, a little newer than usual. So here we are looking at our solenoid, but it's not over yet. This is where things have changed. We can select everything and maybe at least select something. And under the Alt M menu, which is our material menu, this has actually been the same since hard ops has existed. We've always had a material menu. Uh, machine added the ability to hide dot name so we don't see his materials in our menu. But you've always been able to select different materials that you had present. However, recently we've added the ability to add blank materials, which are just better versions of, they're just randomized materials for hard surface. So. I'm going to use the control version, which will give a blank material to every object uniquely. And if we press Alt V, we can bring up the viewport menu where we can go into look dev plus and actually get a good look at what we have here, what we have created. So with our blank materials, usually I find that the results they give us are pretty nice. This doesn't look good from afar. And I want to know why. Also, I've listened to a song and I love this song. And previously you would add a blank material and you didn't like it and you could just do that or you could just keep clicking on this to change it. Well, that was also deemed not fast enough. So now you can actually control click on material scroll to scroll through infinite blank materials that don't exist. I just can't get over some of these features sometimes because the the evolution of them from an idea and, and their arcs to become what you're seeing now, to me, I find to be amazing and addictive and I just can't get enough of it. So, uh, it's so easy to bring certain things to their final levels. Uh, Sharpen, for example, in order to get it to the level that it is now, it required you know, 18,000 uses and, and countless hours of testing and failure and complaints and refinement to finally get us to the version of Sharpen that we're at now, which basically replaces S Sharpen, C Sharpen, ReSharp, Clear Sharps, and even has a little bit of weighted normal and auto smooth control just for good flavor, just to make it the all-in-one utility for dealing with sharpening. And I mean, I'm kind of blabbering on um, blowing hot air about tools at this point, but what else do we have to do? Look at this thing. In 30 minutes, we were done. And I can now press Q with nothing selected to add a camera. For this one, I'm gonna shift click to add a boomerang camera. However, at this time, I wasn't able to get it working absolutely correct. So it looks like we will have to use the F9 menu. But once we orient our camera over to the front of our solenoid, which you know, due to the track two constraint will require us to grab the camera and press R. And now control space bar, we can now look at our solenoid and just bounce back and forth. We could press Alt V, go back inside of look dev, and we could press X to jump through the environments. And so this here is the experience that was intended to be experienced for users trying out the solenoid video in the latest hard ops. Of course, I have to do an updated solenoid video, which is what this is, because you wouldn't know to try the latest features, the new things, the things that I feel have changed the game, unless they were pointed out to you. So I definitely am 
working on having better information conveyance in the future. But for now, let's just stare in awe and admiration of our solenoid. So with that, you know, I welcome you to Hard Ops. And also I thank you for watching this video and I hope that you um, have a good one.